Okay, so here we are with this power factor correction problem. Now what we've got is we've got two three-phase motors connected to a 208 volt, 60 hertz, three-phase source. Uh, motor one, we're told, has an FLA of 42 amps, right? So we know FLA is our I line. Now with a power factor of 0.82, and motor two has an output of 4,000 watts. So it's a 4,000 watt motor, 89% efficient. And a power factor of 0 0.79. So what we want to do here is we want to uh, calculate the I line and the total apparent power of the circuit. And then we want to correct the entire circuit to 0 0.95 power factor calculate again the I line, the apparent power, and the size of the required delta capacitor bank. So a little bit of work ahead of us here. So I'll just kind of go through each one and how I would solve it. So with motor one, I know that my line voltage is 208 volts and my line current is 42 amps. So first thing right off the hop, I'm going to calculate my three phase power by going line voltage times line current times the square root of three, right? My three phase balanced power formula. So in this case, 208 volts times 42 amps times root three, that gives me 15,131.2 volt amps. So right away, what I wanna do with that information is I like a visual cue. So I'm gonna put that onto a power diagram for specifically motor one. I got 15131.2 VA. Throw my power factor here is 0 0.82. Now I'm lucky. Now in order to get my true power, I can just simply go my apparent power times my power factor, right? So I can go P equals S times power factor. Uh, and I can calculate my true power of 12,000. 407.6 watts. Then I use trusty Pythagorean's theorem, uh, S squared minus P squared to give me Q. So that's 8,660.5 VARs. All right, so that's how I would go through the calculation on motor one. Then I'm gonna move into motor two. Now this one's a little bit trickier. I'm told it's a 4,000 watt motor. Now when a motor's rated in wattage, that's always talking about its output. So its output is 4,000 watts at an 89% efficiency. But when I'm talking about current going into the motor, uh, I need to turn that into a input. So what I'm gonna do is on motor two, I'll switch to red here. In order to get my power input, I'm gonna go power output divided by my efficiency. So in this case, 4,000 watts divided by 0 0.89 or 89%. That gives me an input to the motor of 4,494.4 watts. Now, just like motor one, I put that number right onto my power diagram for M2. Over here was M1. Told my power factor, so I can put that in 0 0.79. Now what I have is I have the ability to use my power factor. I can turn it into an angle and use trigonometry, or I can just go watts divided by power factor to give me my VA. And I get 5,689.1 VA. Awesome. Then I can do a little Pythagorean's theorem again, and I get 3,488 VARs. Now, both of these motors, the VARs will be lagging VARs, right? So they will be, the current will be lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. Now what I want to do is I want to combine those two motors to make a total. Right, so what we know when we're calculating our total is that the power total is equal to power 
of motor one plus the power of motor two. All right, our watts will add up. So I add up 12,407.6 plus 4,494.4. And I get exactly 16,902 watts. Same thing with my VARs. They're both lagging reactive VARs. So I just go 8,660.5 plus 3,488. That gives me my total Q, right? So Q total, my reactive power total, Q1 plus Q2. In this case, I end up with 12,100. 48.5 bars. Now again, trusty Pythagorean's theorem, right? My favorite. I'm going to go S total equals P squared plus Q squared. That's going to give me an S of 20,815 VA. And that is the apparent power for the entire circuit. If I wanted, I could calculate my power factor here. I really don't need it. But I do know from up top, I'm looking also for I line of the circuit. So what I want to do to take this to I line, well, my old I line here, I would take my apparent power formula, the one that we used up here, right? The first formula that we used, S3 phase equals E line times I line times root 3. I'm going to take that formula and I'm actually going to transpose it. So I line would equal S3 phase divided by my voltage, my line voltage times root 3. And I put that bottom in brackets. And what I get would be 57.8 amps. So that's my old line current. So I'll put that answer up here. Get 57.8 amps. And my old apparent power before correction was 20,815 VA. Right now, next up, it is asking us to power factor correct the circuit to 0 0.95. Now, we got to remember the goal of power factor correction is always to reduce the incoming line current, right? The goal is to reduce the current leaving my source, right? It's not going to change the current going to each motor. Nothing about the motors will change. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a capacitor bank. And this question specifically says a capacitor bank in delta. So we're going to add a capacitor bank like this. And we know capacitors produce leading reactive VARs and they will cancel out all of my lagging or not all of some of my lagging reactive VARs. But capacitors, they have no watts. So the wattage of the entire circuit will not change. So I like to draw a new power triangle. Call this my new power triangle. I know my power factor is 0 0.95. I'm told that's what I'm correcting it to. And I know my wattage won't change. 16902 watts. Awesome. So now what I can do is I can do my standard uh, triangle math. Uh, I like to go 16902 divided by 0.95 to get a new VA of 17,791.6 VA. Awesome. Now quickly while I'm here, I'm gonna turn that into a current, right? So now my I line after correction, right? Same thing as before. I'm gonna take 17,791.6 divided by 208 volts times root three and I will get my new current. So, so sorry, I don't have that one done. 17, 791.6 divided by 208 times square root of three gives me 49.4 amps. So I have effectively reduced my incoming line current from 57.8 to 49.4. I mean, I'm not done yet. I haven't sized the capacitors, but that's what my new line current would be, right? The goal of power factor correction, right? Lower line losses, uh, less wear and tear on equipment, maybe less of a surcharge from my energy provider. So now I do a little bit of uh, Pythagorean's theorem, and I'm going to get my new Q. So I get 5,555 VARs. 
Now what I want to do with that information is I want to size my cap bank size. So I take my original VARs, 12,148.5 VARs, and I subtract my new VARs, 5,555 VARs. What I get, the difference between them is the size that my capacitor bank needs to be. So in this case, I get a size of 6,593 VARs. Keeping in mind, with a capacitor bank, because it is purely capacitive, my VARs equal my VA, or my S equals my Q. So now that I know how big the size of the required delta capacitor bank needs to be 6,593 VARs, I want to break it down a little bit more, though. I want to break it down into the actual capacitance. So I'm going to come up here, write that down, 6593 VA. Using the same formula as before, I can determine that I need my line current here, my line current, right? I lined the capacitor to be 18.3 amps. Now, now we really need to think about how they are connected. Because they are connected in delta, I also am going to have a phase current which we know has a root three relationship with my line current and it needs to be smaller. So I have 10.57 amps, right? So I got this by going I phase equals I align divided by root three. Get 10.57 amps. In a delta circuit, I know my phase voltage is 208 volts. Now what I want to do is I want to determine what is the Z within each phase. What is the value of impedance of that capacitor? There's one, two, three, one in each phase. That's what I want to determine. So I'm gonna use my trusty old Ohm's law, which I haven't actually used yet here, right? I know that Z would equal V phase divided by I phase, right? Again, reminder, Ohm's law being I, equals volts over ohms, right? So I'm going to take that. So I get 208 volts divided by, again, phase values, 10.57 amps, gives me a Z of 19.68 ohms. Also keeping in mind that in a capacitive circuit, my Z will equal my XC. All right? So the very last step that I want to do here is I want to figure out the capacitance of each capacitor. So I'm going to take my formula of 1 over 2 pi FC, right? And I'm going to transpose it to be 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times reactance and in this case I find out that each capacitor needs to be 135 microfarads if they are connected in delta um, so I do have another video which I'll link as well talking about what's the difference between connecting them up in Y or delta um, but I just wanted to run through this calculation here on a three-phase power factor correction circuit uh, so hopefully this helped, um, and thank you so much for watching.